Let's talk about That Escalated Quickly, a silly party game from the folks at Exploding Kittens. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a ridiculous party game from the folks at Exploding Kittens. Why are we talking about a party game? Well, because sometimes you need a game to play in between the heavy ones. And in fact, I have some abstract games that are coming up that are a little heavier than this one is. So it's good to talk about a silly game sometimes too. And the fact is, summer is here. People are going to be coming to visit or going to visit their family and friends and going to barbecues and things like that. You're going to be with a lot of people who maybe don't play board games every day. Party games are a simple and fun way to get people playing together. That Escalated Quickly, here's the box, That Escalated Quickly is a party game, like I said, it's for between two and eight players. Kids age 10 and up can figure this one out, and games take only about 15 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at That Escalated Quickly by Exploding Kittens. Like I said, this is a light game, a party game, so it is very light, super easy to learn and to teach other people, super quick to play. It's a game where you're, you're working together. It's a cooperative party game. So you're working together and you win the game if you get three good cards. You lose the game. The game ends if you get three bad cards. What does that mean? Well, what you're trying to do is figure out how to rank the answers that all of the players have given to a question. If you get those ranks right, if you put those the, the number of cards that you're going to have in order, that's going to be a good card. If not, it's going to be a bad card. When you have a larger number of players, six to eight players, you're allowed to make a mistake. So if you, if you get one card out of order, that's okay. It could still be a good card. But if you make two mistakes, then you're still stuck with that bad card. So the game ends when you get three of one or the other. Each round, one player is going to be the organizer. And, and the organizer starts by dealing out these numbered cards. So you've got cards numbered from one to ten. You shuffle up that little ten card deck. Each player is going to get one of these cards, including the organizer. That card's going to go face down. None of the other players are allowed to see it. And then the organizer is going to ask a question. I've divided up. I've taken out only half the deck. The other half's in the box. And I've divided it up into four so that you can see what some of the questions are like. Uh, but it might be a question like, oh, I should mention too, the cards are double-sided. So you decide at the start of the game, do you want to use the blue side or the red side? Uh, but the organizer is going to read this question. My favorite theme park just got a new mascot. Which, what is it? Uh, from least disturbing would be a 1 to most disturbing would be a 10. So all of the cards have, okay, this is what you're ranking here. A 1 means this and a 10 means that. The players have those secret numbered cards in front of them. Starting with the organizer, the question is going to be answered. So if you've got a seven, you've got to think of something that's a little bit disturbing, but not too much. You've got to be really careful when you have a card that's in the middle. It's much easier if you have a one or a 10 card uh, to be able to answer those questions. So beginning with the organizer, he's going to give an answer that goes with his number seven, if that's what he had. And then the other players are going to, you're going to go around clockwise. The other players are going to give an answer that matches up with their number, their number that no one else knows. The organizer then is going to, starting with the lowest number, he's going to choose cards so that the, he can put them in order. So if one player said something that wasn't disturbing at all, I'm going to say, oh, I want your card first. And then I, oh, I want this other card. I think it's somewhere in the middle. I had a seven, so that's a little on the high side. Somebody else probably had a 10. So from each player, you're taking their card in, you're trying to get them in order from the smallest number to the largest number. And as I said, with large play counts, you're going to be allowed to make one mistake. If once everyone's card has been gathered and the organizer turns them over one at a time, everything's in order, well, this is a good card now. If not, if you make too many mistakes, it goes on the bad card pile, and then the game is going to end when you get three on one side or the other. Once you've flipped over all of those cards and the round is over, the next player gets to be the organizer and things continue. What skills, though, are you practicing when you play a ridiculous game like that escalated quickly? Well, I, I mean, there's some creativity and imagination involved here. If you're trying to think of a disturbing mascot or a not very disturbing mascot or something in between, uh, if you're trying to think of a very terrifying line for a scary story, if you're trying to think of a useful or useless upgrade for a car, 
you know, you've got to have some creativity there. But I think another important skill that you're practicing when you're playing a game like this is verbal reasoning, verbal problem solving. You've got a rank, you've got adjectives, you need to understand what that adjective means and come up with an idea that other people will understand. Oh, that's, you know, extreme at one end or the other, or it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, and if, if you've got a few players that have cards, you know, a four and a six, then you're really threading a needle there to try and figure out which, which, uh, what your answer is going to be that's going to be clear to the organizer of the game. So verbal reasoning, I think, it's simple. Uh, well, maybe it's not so simple if everybody has cards that are numbered in the middle. If you've got a two and a three, you have to distinguish between them. Uh, but this is a, a basic verbal reasoning game where you might also be developing your vocabulary of adjectives. If we're talking about the younger kids, you know, disturbing or useful or impressive, what have you. What does a signature trick mean if we're talking about a magician and what's his signature trick? You know, these are all adjectives that I think it's uh, it's a good thing for kids to learn. If you want to if you want to be a writer, if you want to be able to write a good essay, you need to have good descriptive words. Final thoughts though about that escalated quickly. Well, like most of the Exploding Kittens games, this is a very silly game. I mean, we laughed the every time I played this, we laughed the entire time. If you've got the right group and the right mood, you're going to have a good time playing this game. It's silly. You might have discussions or arguments about, you know, whether something was cuter or more or less useful based on the person's answers. But this is a silly game. It's just ridiculous. And, and you're laughing and trying to come up with funny ideas. Uh, we really did have a lot of fun playing this one. And it's cooperative. Um, I, I do really like that everyone's working together here. So it's not a game like, I mean, in some ways it might remind you of Cards Against Humanity or Apples to Apples, where, where you know, you're trying to come up with an idea that matches. But here, you're not limited by cards in your hand. You know, you've just got to come up with an idea that matches your number. And there's no judging involved. The organizer isn't judging your answers. He tr he's trying to figure out what you meant in terms of your rank. So to me, that's perfect for, uh, for people who aren't really gamers. You're all working together and nobody's judging anybody else. So uh, what a great idea. It's a game that scales according to age. So I've only played this with adults. But of course, with younger kids, the ideas are going to be you know, more maybe safe for work with the grown-ups. The answers that we were getting were not very safe for work. I will not repeat any of the things that were said in the game that I played, but boy, did we ever have a lot of laughs. Uh, so, you, you know, it's not like you need a special deck of cards with questions that are going to make it more appropriate for grown-ups. These questions are great. Now, some of the questions, though, might be easier for grown-ups to answer or understand. There are questions about landlords. Oh, your landlord put a clause in your lease, you know, from, you know, most likely you're going to take the apartment to lease likely. Uh, you show up late for work, what's your excuse? Uh, you know, there's some things that maybe are more appropriate for grown-ups than for kids, but, you know, you change a wording in the question or, uh, you know, you know it's, it's super easy to just draw another card. Uh, I mean, you've got 300 of these questions. There's 150 cards and they're all double-sided. So uh, super easy to change that around if you need to. There's no artwork on the cards, but, you know, the colors are... Uh, I like the color scheme. Personally, the icons are super clear. It's always very clear what the rank, what the numbers mean from 1 to 10 for most or least or what have you. The cards are coded, so they're, they seem like they're going to be pretty durable. I haven't spilled anything on them yet. Uh, I want to touch wood when I say that. Uh, but they all seem pretty durable, too. Now, are there downsides, though, to that escalator quickly? Well, the main one, right, is that it's a party game, so you need a big group uh, of people to play. There are rules for two and three players. As I said, it's a game for f between two and eight people, uh, but if you are playing two or three players, each player is going to have two number cards, so they're going to have to give two answers. Then they have to remember, okay, this was the answer for that card, this was the answer for the other one, and the organizer has to remember that too when he's trying to get the cards from the players in their ranks. It's more fun, and it's certainly easier to manage when you've got more people in the group. I mean, maybe it's harder to get the right answers, but uh, in terms of just remembering what was said and what goes with which card, it's way easier if you've got individual players, each with one number. So I like this at a higher play count. 
Now there are 300 questions. We haven't occurred. I mean, it hasn't happened where we got repetition uh, in the questions that we were asking or being asked in the game, but that is possible. I mean, I would think that with 300 different questions that you're either going to have different players, so you're, you'll get different answers, you'll have different number cards, so it'll be different enough that there's lots of replayability here, but it's possible you might get some repetition, and if you're just playing this game with your family all the time, you know, you might start to find a pattern in their answers. But uh, what a fun, silly game, and we, every time I played this game, it was just laughing, laughing, laughing the entire time. So I think, like I said, a perfect game for non-gamers, uh, a great palate cleanser in between heavier games if you need a break. Um, we had a lot of fun playing this one. So if you have any questions about that escalated quickly or other exploding kittens games. If you have any suggestions, you can leave them in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes ago. The previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle on the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you.